second Sunday of Lent, the six-week journey of reflection of ourselves and our relationship with God. Today we come to the second part of this six-week series on Jesus's I Am Statements by Rob Fouquet from his book entitled The God We Can Know. The I Am Statements are found in the Gospel of John as Jesus declares, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the true vine. I am the good shepherd and gate of the sheep. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Last week we talked about Jesus being the bread of life and the difference between being full and being satisfied. Until we are satisfied, something always feels like it's missing. We're always looking for more. More security, more esteem, more power, more stuff. Because there never seems to be enough. When Jesus says, I am the bread of life, he is telling us, I don't want you to spend your time chasing after more stuff, trying to feel full. I offer satisfaction no matter what you have and no matter what your circumstance. I am here to give you contentment and peace so you will be satisfied. And then we talked about ways to experience Jesus as our source of satisfaction. We talked about fasting, whether it's abstaining from food, and there was different ways to do that, or television time, or phone time, or computer time, or whatever time. But whatever it was we were to abstain from, to use that time to be intentionally with God. Quietly reading the Bible, reading another devotional, or a spiritual reading. We talked about accepting and being thankful for what God puts in front of us, about making a gratitude list. And lastly, we talked about Jesus as our source of satisfaction when we concentrate on serving others and not just ourselves. We had a handout last week that looks like this. And we had this handout that made suggestions to give something up or give in to something, something new, this Lenten season. If, if you weren't able to be here last week or you forgot yours, there are some on the table in the entranceway. It's not too late, we're only in the second week. So this week, we're focusing on Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. What did Jesus mean by that, and what does it mean for us today? So we are going to use our video, and um, let us hear from Rob Fouquet for a little while uh, on Jesus's I am the light of the world. Feast of Tabernacles or Booths. The Hebrew word for booth is Sukkot. 
It goes back to the wilderness years when the Israelite dwelt in booths. Today, people will be in a modern-day sukkot, or sukkah as they call them. There are palm branches to serve as a roof. And people are encouraged to have their meals during the festival time in the sukkahs. It's not only a reminder of the wilderness years, but the fact that we are still pilgrimage people. We're on a journey. Just like now, in Jesus' day, this festival was one of celebration. Only then, they had something called the Night of Grand Illumination. Giant torches lined the temple courtyard. They say the light was bright enough to illuminate all of Jerusalem. It was reminiscent of the color of fire the Israelites had in the wilderness. A visual confirmation of God's daily guidance. It was at the Night of Grand Illumination when Jesus said the words, I am the light of the world. Something else very important was going on that night. I'm standing now near the northern wall. Close to here was a place called the Hall of Hewn Stones. It's where the great Sanhedrin met. In every Jewish city, there was a Sanhedrin, which means assembly. 23 elders appointed to make decisions regarding religious affairs. In Jerusalem, there was the great Sanhedrin, 69 elders, plus the high priest and an assistant. They met every day except on the Sabbath and during religious festivals. They were meeting that night of the grand illumination during the Feast of Tabernacles. Why? They were plotting how to put Jesus to death. Have you ever been in a place like this? A dark place. A place where you contemplate doing things that are contrary to your nature. Let's go now to the location where Jesus was when he said the words, I am the light of the world. Behind me is the Western Wall, also known as the Wailing Wall, the only accessible part of the original Temple Mount in the Jewish quarter. On top of that wall was the courtyard in Jesus' day. That's where he was standing the night of the Grand Illumination. Close by, the Sanhedrin was meeting. All around in the festival, and Jesus said the words, I am the light of the world. I am a light to people in a time of darkness. I am a guide to people all their days. As you get ready to discuss this session, I leave you now with these images. They are still on a 
journey. This is not the final destination for any of us. Life is a journey. Everything in this world is temporary. And as we live into this earthly part of our eternal life, we never really fully get there. Our ultimate destination is to be with God. None of us have arrived or will arrive in this part of our eternal life. And this can be especially comforting when we're going through a difficult part of our journey here on earth. We can be assured too that this is temporary. It's not our final destination. Just as God gave the Israelites the festival of the tabernacles or festival of booths to remind them that they're on a journey and things are temporary, things change. God gives us that realization also. So that we can ask God questions like, where do you want me to go next? What do you want me to do next? What's on your agenda? It was at the seventh day celebration on the day of grand illumination. Do you think that was a coincidence? There's one day out of the seventh, the day of grand illumination, that Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Now what kind of light do you think Jesus was referring to? And what does it mean for us? Like, when I hear that, I think of Jesus when he went up the mountain for the transfiguration and his clothes were dazzling bright white. And, and he met, he took a few disciples up there with him and he met with Elijah and, jo and Moses and, and I think bright light, that the kind of light you cannot look directly at. I think of Jesus having so much light that Jesus is the light of the world, that each of us have some of that light, because there's enough for everyone. Rob Fouquet, in his book, calls this flashlight faith. So, have you ever been outside when it's pitch dark and use a flashlight? And I don't mean one of those big, I mean, you can probably get flashlights nowadays that, you know, you can see for miles. I don't know. There's so many things out there. But I'm talking about an ordinary flashlight. It's pitch dark outside. You use a flashlight. It lights up enough that you can just see your next steps so you don't stumble or fall, right? Like these. I had extras. You know, we had for the kids, and we'll give them to them next week. But, you know, I mean, these are kind of small. So maybe you'd use a little bigger flashlight than this outside in the pitch dark. But it lights up just enough. The flashlight is not bright enough to see your destination, wherever you're going in the pitch dark. Right? If you're camping, usually to the restroom. Right? <laughs> Anybody who's been in, you know, use a flashlight, right, in camping? And you know, right, it's a normal flashlight. You just, it's just showing you enough to go the next step. But the use of the light guides you to your destination. This is flashlight faith. Believing that Jesus' light will shine enough for you to take the next step, even when you don't see that destination. For instance, perhaps your next step is speaking honestly with a loved one about a situation, something maybe you've been avoiding because you don't know what the outcome of that conversation will be. You don't know the destination there. Perhaps your next step is looking towards a new job or career. You've been putting it off because where you are is comfortable and you think that you can see your destination better from where you are currently rather than a new place. 
Maybe your next step is trying something new. Something you've been thinking about, but you just haven't made the time to do it yet. Maybe it's a class, or a sport, or a group, you know, getting into some group, or a writing that you've, you know, I want to write this or that, and you just haven't. Maybe your next step is going to see the doctor to see what that discomfort is you've been having. Perhaps your next step is heading something up, or being part of something and not heading it up. <laughs> right? But no matter how or where we are led, we just have to know that Jesus is our light. Shining enough in our life to show us the next step. And may we remember that we're on a journey. That everything is temporary. This is not our destination. So we don't need to be afraid to step out of the darkened places in our lives or the places of routine in our lives and into the light of Jesus Christ. Amen.